You know what we haven't done yet? We haven't used the chain rule with trig functions yet. Let's fix that. Example nine, use the chain rule rather than the quotient rule to show that the derivative with respect to x of secant x is equal to secant tangent. So whenever we first prove this derivative rule, that's exactly what we used. We used the quotient rule. We rewrote secant as one over sine. No, we didn't. One over cosine like this. Let's just say that my function is called f of x. And uh, as secant x, if I want to try to find its derivative, I rewrite it as 1 over cosine. So we had to use the quotient rule where we treated 1 as the top function and the cosine as the bottom function. But now that we have the chain rule, we can rewrite this quotient as hmm, cosine of x. And then I'm going to raise all of that to the negative 1 power. And I can use the uh, chain rule to find its derivative because i got a function raised to some sort of power. Don't confuse this with the inverse of cosine because it's not. It's the reciprocal of cosine. All right, we are ready to take its derivative. f prime of x is equal to leapfrog this power down and then subtract 1 from that power. So negative 1 times cosine x to the negative 2 power. And then we have to multiply it times the derivative of the interior function derivative of cosine is negative sine. Okay, let's clean this up a little bit. Hmm? Like these negatives cancel, which is nice and satisfying. And then uh, maybe I'd get rid of this negative exponent and make that 1 over cosine squared times sine x. Wait a minute, that's not what this is. Did we make some sort of mistake? No, we're just going to have to rearrange some things. So. I've got a cosine squared down here in the bottom. I'm going to take one of these factors of cosine, and I'm going to give it over here to this term involving the sine. Rewrite it like this. 1 over cosine x times sine x over cosine x. Right? If I were to multiply these, these two cosines will multiply it together to give me cosine squared. What's 1 over cosine? It's secant. What's sine over cosine? It's tangent. And there we got it. Ta -da. Just in case the quotient rule didn't work out for you, now maybe the uh, chain rule will. Will, will, will. Let's look at example 10, where we have derivatives of a some more trig functions. Each one of these requires, in some kind of fashion, the chain rule. Why is that? Let's look at the first one. I've got the sine of 2x. 2x is inside of the sine function's composition. Okay. Uh, number two, I've got sine squared x. Well, really, the interior function is sine x, and then you're squaring that. And then the same kind of thing is happening over here. The interior function is cosine, and then we're taking the square root. All of these things need the chain rule. So on uh, number one, y prime is equal to, I'm going to take the derivative of something. The derivative, the derivative of something. The derivative of sine of something is cosine of that same something. But then we need to multiply it times the derivative of that something, that interior something, which is just 2. Okay. All right. And then maybe just for clarity's sake, we bring that 2 out to the front and make that 2 times the cosine of 2x. And you can probably bet that most people, if you're going to forget something, you're going to forget that 2. And you shouldn't do that because you're going to miss it. Number 2. I'm going to rewrite this first. Rewrite it as the sine of x quantity squared. Now I can see it is definitely a function. Inside of a function, must use the chain rule to find its derivative. Look, I'm going to switch things up to the Leibniz notation. Leapfrog that 2 down. 2 times the sine of x to the first power. And then, don't forget the chain rule part. Take the derivative of the interior derivative of sine is cosine. Not much you can do with that one, so just keep it. Just keep it. All right, and then one last one. Like number two, I'm going to rewrite this one as y is equal to cosine x to the one-half power. And then I've got a composite function again. And leapfrog, when I take its derivative, one-half cosine x. But then we have to take the derivative of the interior function. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not done. You can't just... You can't just write it as just cosine, because mm -mm, it's not. 
It's cosine to the negative one-half power. Whew, I almost forgot to subtract one from that power. All right, now it's done, right? Except it's not, because again, we forgot the chain rule component. Derivative of co cosine is negative sine. Uh-oh, just went outside the box. All right, let's just clean it up. The negative does not, unfortunately, cancel with anything, so it's just going to stick around. Negative sine x on top. The 2 will come down to the bottom, and then I'll rewrite the cosine of negative 1 half as the square root of cosine x. Yep, now it's done. All right, then. Maybe, maybe just one more of these. On example 11, find the derivative f of t is equal to the sine cubed of 4t. Hmm. We have a super composite function. It's a composite function within a composite function. Function within a function within a function. Why is that? Because I can rewrite this like this. f of t is uh, equal to the sine of 4t raised to the third power. Okay, so sine of 4t is inside the cubing function, and then 4t is inside the sine function. So I'm going to have to use the chain rule twice in order to take the derivative of this thing. When I take the derivative and there's multiple composite functions, then uh, what I would recommend is every step of the way, writing it out like this. f prime of x is equal to leapfrog the 3 down times the sine of 4t. Subtract 1 from that exponent to the second power. Now we're going to multiply it times the derivative with respect to t of the interior function sine of 4t. Okay, so this part's not done yet. First part gets to stay, and maybe I rewrite it as 3 sine squared of 4t, because that's prettier. Okay, now the derivative of sine of 4t is cosine of 4t. Oh, but it was a composite function as well, so we're going to have to multiply it times the derivative with respect to t of 4t. The derivative with respect to t of 4t is just 4, and you know what? I'm going to take that 4. I'm just going to bring it out to the front here to make that 12. So here's your final derivative, 12, sine squared of 4t times the cosine of 4t, and it's finished. And so is this video.